ambassador and plenipotentiary of the People's Republic of China, Chin Gong. Ambassador, we are so delighted to have you here this evening and we really look forward to your comments. I'll just do a brief introduction. Ambassador Chin has arrived in the United States only recently. However, he is already extremely active and has demonstrated determination and vigor in building relationships in the United States. He has met with many leaders of the American business community and clearly is a friend of trade, investment, commerce, and full-throated economic engagement. We warmly welcome this approach. Ambassador Chin was born in Tianjin, the adopted hometown of Premier, Premier Zhou Enlai, and mentioned a few times earlier this evening. He spoke, he joined the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 1988, and he served as a spokesperson at the Chinese Embassy in London, and he became Vice Minister in 2018. Mr. Ambassador, we'd be very grateful to hear your thoughts this evening. Dr. King Zimder, on the Secretary Fernandez, Representative Miller, um, Ambassador Roy, Mr. Lamberger, Ambassador Allen, friends of business community, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Please eat as you like. <laughs> It is my great pleasure to attend the gala of U.S.-China Business Council. I've been in the U.S. for four months. I can feel China is everywhere. As a Chinese ambassador, I'm not popular everywhere. <laughs> but in business community, I have found myself most popular. <laughs> but the same of this event is the way forward. To open up a way forward, we need to look forward, think forward, and have confidence. I give my tribute to Dr. Kissinger for his farsightedness and wisdom. And I share the vision and objectiveness of Ambassador Roy has in China-US relations. I echo Ambassador Allen's remarks about the importance of trade and the business. The key word I want to highlight is confidence. First, we must keep our confidence in China's high quality development. This year marks the centenary of the Communist Party of China. The sixth plenary session of the 19th CPC Central Committee held recently has comprehensively reviewed the major achievements and the historical experience of the CPC in the past 100 years. A very important piece of the experience is putting people first. Fulfilling the people's aspiration for a better life is a mission of the CPC. It also provides the biggest driving force for China's development. Thanks to generations of hard work, the Chinese people have eliminated absolute poverty and built a moderately prosperous society. We are on our way forward to build a modern socialist country and achieve common prosperity. To this end, 
China is fostering a new development paradigm, which with domestic circulation as the mainstay and domestic and international circulations reinforcing each other and promoting high quality development. In the first three quarters of this year, China's economy grew by 9.8% year on year, higher than the growth rates of both the global average and the major economies. Domestic demand contributed over 80% to our growth and our international trade in goods increased by nearly 23% year on year. China's economy has made important contributions to the recovery of global economy and the trade from COVID-19 and will make further progress in quality and efficiency. China's middle income group continues to expand and the people have growing needs for quality products and services. Looking into the future, China, it is set to become the biggest consumer market in the world. American companies are welcome to come aboard to share the dividends of China's high quality development. Second, we must shore up our confidence in China's high standards opening up. This year marks the 20th anniversary of China's accession to the World Trade Organization. Over the past two decades, China has fully delivered on its accession commitments. Its overall tariff rate has been cut from 15.3% to 7.4%, lower than the 9.8% accession commitment. Nearly 120 subsectors of the service industry have been opened, exceeding our commitment of 100. The central government has reviewed and revised over 2,300 pieces of laws and regulations, and the local governments over 190,000 pieces. A domestic economic management system aligned with international rules has been established. These measures have unleashed market and the social vitality. Over the last two decades, China has opened itself increasingly wider, promoting our own development and empowering global development and the prosperity. China has become the world's largest trader in goods, the second largest trader in services, and a major trading partner of more than 120 countries and regions. For 20 years, China's average annual contribution to global growth has remained at about 30%. As reiterated by the sixth plenary session, China will continue to comprehensively deepen reform and opening up. We will further shorten the negative lists on foreign investment access, enable all round opening up of agriculture and the manufacturing, open the telecommunications, healthcare, and other service sectors wider and implement a negative list for cross-border service trade nationwide. We will advance trade and investment liberalization and the facilitation and build a market-oriented, law-based and world-class business environment. We will take an active and open attitude in negotiations on digital economy, trade, and the environment, industrial subsidies, and the state-owned enterprises. 
we have applied for joint the CPTPP and the DEPA, namely the Digital Economy, Economy Partnership Agreement. We are improving and enforcing laws and the regulations on anti-monopoly and the stepping up regulation of some industries. This is for the healthy development of the market economy and the common international practice. We will communicate with the market in the process of policy making and the implementation and do our best to create a stable, fair, transparent, and a predictable business environment. China's high standard opening up will provide a bigger market and more opportunities for the US and other countries. Third, we must rebuild our confidence in China-US relations. Indeed, the China-US relationship is going through serious difficulties. This does not serve the fundamental interests of two countries and the peoples. Two weeks ago, President Xi Jinping and the President Joe Biden held a virtual summit. They have agreed that China and the US should respect each other, coexist in peace, increase communication, handle differences constructively, prevent conflict, and strengthen cooperation. The summit has provided direction and guideline for our relations in the new era. China will work with the US to implement the spirit of the summit and inject more positive energy into our relations. Economic and the trade cooperation has always been an anchor and the propeller of our ties. China is ready to enhance such cooperation with the US to expand our shared interests. We need to strengthen existing cooperation in agriculture, manufacturing, and the financial services. And I believe our cooperation in energy in the response to climate change means more opportunities to companies of both countries. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you are concerned about the resumption of business travel to China. Let me announce a piece of good news here. We are implementing President Xi's direction on upgrading fast track arrangement to provide more conveniences for you. With the upgraded arrangement, the time needed for travel approval will be shorter, no more than 10 working days. Testing and the quarantine will be more convenient. You can work during quarantine if conditions for a quarantine bubble are eligible. We have formulated a specific work plan and we'll share it with USCBC very soon. On your other problems and the concerns in market access and the business environment, we will lend an attentive ear and do our best to help. We also hope to have your understanding and an objective and a long-term view from you on these matters. According to a latest US CBC report, America's goods export, exports to China reached $123 billion in 2020 up by nearly 18%, while its exports to other parts of the world last year dropped by 15%. China's economic growth has not only greatly boosted US exports, 
but also supported almost 1 million US jobs. This proves once again that our economic and the trade ties are win-win in nature. They are not, I win, you lose, or you win, I lose. Trade issues should not be politicized. Decoupling and the building walls would only undermine global industrial and the supply chains and the damage or cooperation and the common interests. So we call for openness and inclusiveness. We call for early abolition of the additional tariffs. We call for the abolition of Cold War mentalities, not only by words, but by deeds. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my first winter in Washington, DC. Being with a galaxy of business leaders here tonight, I feel very warm and encouraged. Your passion and the confidence in our way forward remind me of a quote of a famous English poet, Percy Shirley. If winter comes, can spring be far behind? Together, let us breathe this winter and the embrace the arrival of spring. Thank you. Ambassador Chin, thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate, of course, your commitment to building